Hey guys, we got this DeWalt DW402 four and a half inch angle grinder. It has failed in service due to what I believe a um, bearing issue. Um, I'm not sure if it's from use or from uh, rusting issues. This is a heavily abused tool. Uh, I have it plugged in and I will show you what it sounds like when it is turned on. As you can see, there's a lot of resistance in here due to the bearing. So we're going to tear this down and I'm going to bring you along the way and we'll see what the cause of failure was and if we can salvage any parts from this. Alright, so for the casing, plastic casing and front metal casing of this uh, grinder, it uses the T20 Torx bit. As you can see, we have four bolts in the back here, four in the front, and two in the shield. You can also use a flathead screwdriver to take these out. I'm going to take this shield off. That will be one item that we can save from this. I think the best course of action, let's see if we can take this rear part off, just to see what's back here. There we go. Alright, so if you don't know, these, these angle grinds are equipped with a, a lock switch, so a trigger lock, so whenever you engage this, you can push this pin in and lock behind it. To engage the lock and then it'll hold your trigger forward so we can take that out. I'm going to continue taking off the front. Battery died. Hold on, guys. Hmm. That's a different size Torx there. I think I have it though. On your spindle or the drive shaft, you might call it. Um, it's actually a T15 Torx. There's three bolts there. Alright, you can see the grease in here from the factory. I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit and I'll, we'll see if there's any broken teeth. But before we do that actually, I think the source of our problem, you can kind of hear it a little bit, is in here. The main drive bearing. I can feel it. it's missing a ball or it has a cracked ball in there. Let's see if we can pop this off. If 
Okay, so those T15 torques look like they were actually just bearing retainers. So that bearing is pressed in there, and they just are a safety feature to retain it. So we're going to have to press this out or beat it out. But before we do that, we need to take this small snap ring off. i got to see if I have snap ring pliers to get that off of there. All right, so I do have a set of snap ring pliers that fits this. Make sure you wear your safety glasses. These things will shoot off into space. You could probably use a spreader or a flathead to get this off too, but there we go. Perfect. Got that off of there. Get your mallet. Hmm. That's not coming out. What I did figure out while you guys are gone, this may be hard to pick up, but all of the teeth on this gear, not all of them, I'd say about half are completely rounded over. See right here? They're all rounded, rounded, rounded. You can see the shininess. And then when you get back to this side, you got your teeth again. That's where it starts to ramp up. So I don't know if that sound was was this or it was the bearing. So where did that bearing go? I think it's the bearing as well. We'll have to press that out. Um, let me see if I can make something to press that out real quick. I started looking at the drive end of this gear set. See if it has all its teeth. I believe it does. So this was a superior metal if it caused the other one to fail. I don't see any chipped teeth. See if we can pull this off. There we go. And there's no chip teeth in here either, so that was probably a long term grinding of those teeth on that uh, piece we looked at earlier. There we go. This will get a better look at that. There's a couple chips out of it. Definitely a couple chips, but no teeth missing. So that's interesting. I believe this is held on by an O-ring, which I just pulled off. And that'll slide right off, and that's a spline fit. You can see the spline teeth on there, spline fit onto that shaft. And there's a drive bearing here. Thought it was coming. Might need a puller for this, but yeah, that bearing's on there. If we spin it, no indication of uh, flat spots on the on the balls or anything. I'm gonna try to tear this casing apart and get a better look at it. All right, I found out how the trigger switch works. It's a pivoting action. And once this rocks on that, it pulls out like that. You can see that piece extend there, and that's a that's a momentary on on that. It's spring loaded, so there must be a spring in here to pull it back. 